Kayat. A map. A weapon. Oh man, it's gonna be a good Friday. What's going on, guys? My name is Tommy. This cat's name is Azazel. Azazel, do you wanna do you wanna do a boop? Can you be better than Achilles? Why do these cats all? I hate everything. I guess I'm a dog person. We're back for another episode of Faction Fridays. Today, it's up to me. I've got the requests. Today, the cat eats my hair. And also, we're going to pop open one of my favorite splat books. One of the few splat books. Okay, I see how you are, cat. That I've read front to back. Belkzen, Hold of the Orc Hordes. And we're going to talk about, well, the orcs of the Hold of Belkzen. How you can bring orcs like them into your game, what they look like, and how we can play a part of what is more or less a faction of Galarian. I mean, you go there, it's ruled by them. You die a miserable death. Anyway, don't do that. But do like, subscribe, ding the bell. And remember that patronage gets your requests in this series or any other series. To the top of the list today, this episode of Faction Fridays was brought to you in part by Tim Bartlett. You might know him as Tempe over at Wrath of the Righteous. He's also my roommate. He's also super cool in and of the fact that he doesn't mind that I ate his ice cream in the middle of the night last night. Diabetes is as diabetes does. What can I say? I didn't want to die last night. In any case, thank you for your support, my friend. Now, here we go. Okay, so we talked about orcs on Monday. And if you missed that, follow this card right up here. We also talked about the hold of Belkzen in and of itself. A long, long time ago at the Inner Sea Region, a five minute tour. You can follow this card right up here to learn more about that. Quick TLDR about orcs. Used to live in the Darklands, were run up by the dwarves, fought the dwarves, live in dwarf fortresses, used to have more places. Now they have Belkzen. If it can be said that they have much of anything, Galarian's orcs are at least as far as in the hold of Belkzen is concerned, a system of warring tribes. There are a couple places where orcs live year-round, but they're mostly semi-nomadic. Their movements can be divided into two distinct periods, the Proving Time and the Flood Truce. The Proving Time is from early fall to early spring, and it's basically the time where we kill each other for fun and for sport and to prove our dominance. However, during late spring and late summer, the Flood Truce is the only time where the region the orcs live in is really capable of sustaining life, at which point all of the orcs travel to central Belkzen to hunt for game, make alliances, and mate. During this time, orc-on-orc -orc violence is strictly taboo. However, everyone else, fair game. Unless, of course, you carry a special little token ranging anywhere from 50 GP to several thousand. Presenting that token indicates you are under the protection of an orc tribe. Though, of course, other orcs, other tribes, might not even recognize it. So, travel at your own risk and with your own bodyguards. In any case, of course, there are thousands upon thousands of orc tribes within Belkzen, some of which with history spanning generations, some being only a couple years old. And they all have really fun names. Bloody Gauntlet, Black Sun, Death's Head, Defiled Corpse, oopsie. Today, let's focus on the Empty Hand. The Empty Hand is the largest and most powerful, as well as the most controversial tribe in Belkzen. It controls the city of Urgir, which is an ancient dwarven sky citadel that we ran the dwarves out of a long time ago. And it's led by none other than the orc I've been using this whole time for the art. You thought I was just being lazy. Nah, he's real important. Grask Oldeth. He's one of the most cunning and forward-thinking orc leaders in generations. Of course, this leads other orc tribes to look down on Oldeth and his tribe. Their city is vast and wealthy, and all the coin in Belkzen basically comes through them. So of course, they're doing pretty good, but they're also allowing non-orcs into the city who aren't slaves, and they make money from taxes. Oh, <gasps> I know, right? How dare they? Grask, poo-poo. That, of course, is very anathema. There's a playtest word for you. To one of the chief beliefs of all of orcdom, take it by force or it isn't yours. Grask has also been responsible for developing and instituting several reforms in her gear, up to and including that token system we talked about, as well as sending half-orc diplomats out to find merchants who might want to relocate to her gear in exchange for being lightly taxed and getting hefty personal guards, even going so far as to set up a crude police force. This has all gone his way so far, but of course, nearing middle age, his 
efforts to move forward his people are only gonna last so long. However, it's real important because they're not all just brutal, savage, punch you until you die. Because, like, as a race, you can't last if you do that, right? You certainly can't progress or be treated as anything more or less than, well, savage monsters. But how do you bring these guys into your games? Well, they don't have the obediences and all the fun stuff that those fancy core deities do, but of course, this splat book gives us not two, not four, but six orc-specific gods from their own pantheon. Everything from Nolgreth, the blood god, yeah, you heard it here first, no skull throne here, god of basically barbarian stuff, to the Thunderer Rull, the god of lightning, storms, and thunder, or Dretha, quite literally the goddess of making sure there are enough orcs for fighting. Fun! Though there certainly isn't an orc prestige class, there are several orc-only archetypes, think the Scarred Witch Doctor, before its errata lets you basically cast off your con, so that's dumb, as well as several animals native to that part of Avistan that orcs use as weapons of destruction. Taking them as an animal companion can cement your relationship with the orcs of Belkzen. Anything from the Bristleboar to the Whisperfall Vulture to the almighty Warcat of roll. Yeah, why not? Let's have a giant tiger alligator that's diet includes small dragons and giants. Seems balanced. Anyway, bringing these factions into your game is just as easy as having orcs splitting them off into a bajillion tribes and then orchestrating those tribes and setting things up in such a way that it's a little more codified than just we hear, we smash. Of course, there's nothing wrong with occasional smashes, but I really like the orcs of the Hold of Belgzen as a whole because they're more than that. Especially when we think about the only faction that's more forward thinking because that's a campaign unto itself. Doesn't even necessarily have to be orcs. Any short-lived anything, really. Or any race that is defined by one trait that most individuals would consider to be bad. A campaign where your party helps these less than up to par races catch up I think is a lot more unique and interesting than just smashing them forever and jamming from an orc from here. That's basically the idea, I think. Anyway, that's all the time I have for today. What do we think about the orcs of Belkzen? Do we like to play them? Do we like to kill them? Well, now Achilles is on my lap. Achilles, can I have a boop? Come on, man. This is the second video that you're, yeah, you see it, come on. Boop, but you gotta go up here. Come on. Dude, I hate this.